Hi, everybody. Uh, so, yeah, my name's Darren, part of Ex Nilo. I work behind the computers, not in front, so just kind of bear with me as I navigate through a bit of a crowd here. Uh, slightly intimidating, you know, deal with screens, not people. <laughs> cool, so yeah, Ex Nilo, uh, you might know us as Hetzner South Africa formerly, so a few years back, we changed the name to Ex Nilo, and that came with a bit of a renewed purpose here, which is around business enablement, especially with entrepreneurs and small businesses. Uh, so with a collective experience of over 20 years in hosting, web hosting, co-location servers, um, this is us now looking more as a business enabler rather than just a hosting solution itself. So one thing I'm particularly passionate about and the rest of the company as well, and this is managed WordPress uh, hosting. So what it is is previously WordPress can come with a few technical barriers. Um, it can be sometimes a little bit intimidating to get into it and getting the setup. And it's answering the question of how do I get started and where do I get started? Where is my ground zero to actually begin this journey to build an online presence and an online website? This has been a challenge overcoming for quite a while. A lot of competitors, a lot of platforms you may see like Shopify, Wix, everyone's sort of venturing into this market. So we've gone and we've taken our experience around hosting and we've put this extra layer on it now with WordPress. So, you know, focusing on what we're good at, which is hosting, it comes with things like security, the backups, the real, you know, infrastructure behind WordPress and giving you this opportunity to build your WordPress on top of this, but also with a lot of extra features that help create a safer and easy environment to develop it. So, you know, there's things like a staging website. So take an example, you have your live website. Uh, this is what your customers are seeing on a daily basis. If you want to experiment, you want to make changes, you want to play with it, you want to be, you know, add your own personal touches without anybody seeing it, you can use a staging site which creates an exact clone of your website and lets you do play, experiment, try things, break it. Um, we do all the time, we break things often. But having that confidence that you can just reset and you can go forward is a fantastic feature. But this also, you know, it opens up doors to where you can show your customers changes before they even go live. So, but there's other things such as automated backups. Uh, you, when you're building your business, you gotta think, what are the things I don't wanna be spending time on, but I don't wanna worry about it. So. Automated backups, everything is there, everything is safe. The reality of being in tech is things go wrong. It's just, it's nobody's fault and it can go wrong. But having that safety of a one-click solution to restore a previous backup, you back up and running. On top of that, uh, covering things like email. You get, a, you get free email with 100 inboxes. So this covers things like if you'd like to create an account, an info, query, support, you've got all these different channels and you can properly monitor it. Yeah, that's just some of the, the really cool features behind it. Um, but one of the things that is really cool and I encourage you to try is our 30 day free trial. This comes with no obligation. So you're not entering your credit card, you're not gonna get charged over 30 days. You get to try the site, you get to play with it, you get to use all our starter sites. Uh, I'll circle back to that one. You get to play around with these and there's no commitment. If it comes 30 days, you can let it expire, nothing happens. Uh, so one thing we've done is the starting point is starter websites. So this is WordPress users themes, um, but what we've done is we've created our own themes, but then also added some starter content. Uh, this is just pages, some layouts, so you can actually see what your website will look like. So you'll have your About Us page, home, contact, all the basics. The newest one we launched is Athletic. Uh, this is a WooCommerce um, bolt starter site. So it comes with everything you need to actually run an online shop. So this is your WooCommerce, which creates the online store, the checkout page. Um, it has Yoko pre-installed. This is a payment gateway. And you just need to create an account and you can immediately start payments. So the whole process from start to finish, you could actually get a online shop up and running in a day. And that's it. So there's a lot more exciting things coming around. We have a big roadmap and we're gonna build upon it. But if you have any questions, I encourage you, come chat with us. We'll be at the back there. 
and can probably answer a lot of it. Can we get another big round of applause? The business of building e-commerce sites as our topic tonight. And uh, I, um, I'm super excited to have uh, Shannon and Matt on stage. Uh, we've already interviewed uh, um, both of them uh, with regards to their various expertise. And, and I think it's, it's really a privilege to have their time uh, and, and obviously the opportunity for us all to ask questions of Shannon and Matt tonight. So I encourage you once again just to have your questions ready and I'll give you an opportunity in due course. But first, I would like to ask if the two of you could please introduce yourselves just a little bit. So Shannon, starting with you, just a little bit about who you are and maybe talk a little bit about Ubuntu Baba and your, and your role there and then what you're doing now currently. Cool, is this one? Yes. <laughs> Hi everyone. Um, my name's Shannon and I'm the founder of Ubuntu Baba. Um, I've been running Ubuntu Baba for eight years now, eight and a half years. Um, and I come from a web design background. So me and Matt actually go quite far back. Um, back, I think it was like 10, 12 years ago that we met. <laughs> um, in the very early WordPress days, and I was actually like crying inside listening to you speak about how easy it is to <laughs> make a website now. I was like, oh my God. It didn't <laughs> used to be. <laughs> Yo, yeah. So um, that's, yeah, my background was there. And then, um, you know, I, I got pregnant in 2014 with my son. And um, he came into my life. And the idea was to stay being a, a web designer. Um, but then baby wearing came onto my radar. And my whole, my whole plan changed. So since then, I've been doing running Ubuntu Baba. It's been an up and down journey. Um, lots of highs, lots of lows. And yeah, here we are today. <laughs> Uh, just an encouragement to go have a look. If those of you who haven't seen Ubuntu Baba, I assume there's a few of you that haven't had kids yet, um, <laughs> have a look at this site because it truly is an incredible site and an incredible product. Uh, and there have been some rip-offs of the product, which hopefully we'll get to talk about a little bit later. Um, but uh, before we do, Matt, can you give us a little bit of a rundown of you and what you do at WooCommerce? Yeah. Sure. Uh, hi, everyone. So I'm Matt. Uh, from WooCommerce, as Fred said. Uh, so currently, I head up the marketplace on WooCommerce, so where you'd go to buy add-ons and themes and, and things to make your store exactly the way you want. Uh, my journey with Woo, though, started probably about 13 years ago now, I think, uh, when we were building WordPress themes. Right, So we used to build these big like kitchen sink-style themes. It wasn't just a a design, it was a design and a bunch of features on top of that as well to like build a booking system or real estate management or, or things like that. And it was really just code stuffed inside of a theme because the theme is what everyone sees first, right? But people kept asking, what is this? Like, how do I sell with this? Like the design is great and I love the colors and everything, but how can I sell here? So we thought, great, okay, let's build this, this e-commerce platform and maybe we'll sell a few more themes. Right, that was actually the whole idea, is to build this e-commerce platform to sell more themes. And then we quickly discovered, oh wow, okay, you need payment gateways and all these other things. And that's really where the marketplace idea came from. So it's, it's really baked into the DNA of Woo, and I'm really proud to be running it today, because it's, it's just so, it's been a part of the journey since the beginning. And it's, it's just a, it's a fantastic place to go and find exactly what you're looking for. Yeah. Just, just a shout out to Matt as well. He, I mean, he's quite a humble dude, but he's also one of the OGs of the industry, having hung out with you know all the big founders like Mark and AD and you know Matt Mullenweg and so on. So behind the scenes of the techie crew, uh, Matt's a bit of a legend. So again, we have we they, we've got some legends amongst us here tonight. So just really, you know, use this time well. Let's let's really try and dig in deep to the information at our disposal and. Um, with that in mind, let's kind of start at the beginning. If we can talk about what is it? I mean, there's some of us here who, you know, we, I mean, there's, the, uh, um, you know, s some folks from some of the communities in, in Strand, in Kailiche. There's some of the guys from the water, Watershed and Workshop 17 and the, the tech uh, community who have products but who, who don't have the ability or they, they haven't had the opportunity to put them online. So 
how did they start? Let, let's talk practical steps, like right at the beginning, how would you advise, and Shannon, I'm going to turn to you first. In terms of those first steps, what would you advise somebody who's a baby entrepreneur getting started, how? how? What did the, the, those first steps look like? Well, it's obviously a lot easier today um, to get online. So, you know, you've got things as well like um, Facebook where you can just put a, a shopping catalog up that's for free, you know. Um, you don't even have to, to um, get, get in any knowledge about Word, WordPress or web design or anything like that. I mean, I'm hearing about Xnilo's 30-day trial now for the first time. I think that's incredible um, to start out with as well, just to test the waters and um, kind of get a feel for, I'm sure there's tutorials on how to do it, and just get a feel for what, it's, what it means to have a website, what it means to upload a product. Um, you know, back when I started, I remember as well, it was like, it was just so easy. I, I always think to myself, it's so easy to upload something to Facebook and make a post. It's so few people actually look at that as an opportunity in the beginning because they just think, oh, that's a social media add-on. I mean, I know, especially in the mom arena, there's a lot of moms who, they're home with baby, they, they get this business idea that comes into their mind and they start very small and they start their business on Facebook or they start an Instagram page. They don't even have e-commerce yet. They have nothing like that. Um, and they just start putting stuff out and say, DM me. And all of a sudden, you know, you've you got one customer, you've got five customers, people are talking to each other, then you've got inquiries coming and you haven't done any marketing yet. It's just word on the street, you know, which is like the best form of marketing. Um, so I think, yeah, it's really, it's uh, also like people think e-commerce and online is different to, to any other business, but it's, it's really e-commerce is just taking a real business online. So you've got to think like from the beginning, this is a real business um, getting it online is like a step, but you're going to do all the same things as someone that's launching a, a straight business that they don't plan to take online. You know, who's your customer? Um, what problem are you solving? How can you get in front of that customer even in real life before you even take it online? Um, yeah, and I think I just think social media today, TikTok, all these things that's available are free, and it's a great place to start. Matt? Exactly. I mean, you hit the nail on the head there. Like, it's it's a business first and it's an e-commerce platform and all of the other things like second, right? So, I mean, a good example for you. So my wife and I run like a sensory play classes and workshops and things like that for, for toddlers, right? So six months to about two years. And we do it at, at home in Takai. And, you know, we, we put up a website and all that because I enjoy doing that. So I just decided we'll, we'll do that. But I didn't say, oh, this is going to be the thing that's driving this business. And you go on to, you know, you talk to people and network and you can put up Google ads and all that sort of thing. But people say one thing. They say, Takai, too far, <laughs> right? So even, even Plumstead, people said Takai, too far, <laughs> okay? So as an example, right, right there, right, it's about like WhatsApp groups. It's about going to your local library, putting up flyers and things like, in our case, it wasn't about the technology, right? It was about getting to the people. Right, so whatever WhatsApp groups there might be in the area, that's another great avenue. But it's know your product, know your customer, really at the outset. That's the main thing. And you know, when you when you start out any business venture, you you are all of it. Right, so you you know, marketing, logistics, sales, admin, accounting, the lot. You're the courier and everything in between. Right, so that that's really I think the best place to start is actually to to feel out that whole journey right from like what is the product all the way through to getting it into the customer's hands. And then you say like, what do you think? And then you get that feedback and the whole loop kind of continues. That's, that's such a good answer. And um, that's also probably the most Capetonian thing I've heard in a while, <laughs> too far. <It's laughs> I think I, somebody who, who um, was asking me if they could meet with me the other day and uh, I said, well, I live in Hot Bay, do you wanna come for a Hot Bay roastery coffee? And they're like, ah, oh, it's too far. And I was like, well, where do you live? And they're like, no, Constantia. <laughs> so like, dude, it's really? Like, so we had to meet at Chardonnay Deli, which is like in Constantia. It's like too far. So yeah, and by the way, shout out to the people from Strand and from Kaicho who've come all the way to, uh, to the CBD to be here, to listen to us. So um, it was not too far. In terms of... Maybe then some of the, the, the consideration, technical or otherwise, 
Um, I mean, maybe you can talk about the business considerations, and, and Matt, you can talk more of the technical stuff. But what are some of the considerations that maybe people don't really consider when starting out, um, if anything comes to mind? Yeah, I think people will um, discount in real life, especially now after COVID, um, people are so used to just being online, being behind the screen and using that as a form of marketing. You know, Just because you put a Facebook post up doesn't mean people are actually gonna see it, especially with the algorithms these days. Um, and as soon as you start giving Facebook money, they know. <laughs> like I have, I don't even know how many people like the Facebook page of Ubuntu Baba, but no one likes our posts. So if you don't, if you wanna go like them, it'd be great. <laughs> like literally, I sometimes am the only person that likes the post. So, like, I, I think, you know, you put the Facebook post up, but you need people to know that you exist in the real world. So we can make, like, events like this happen now. You know, when I started out, um, I had Facebook. Um, I had the e-commerce shop up. But the, the thing that actually got me going um, the most, which is something that just, like, kind of happened by accident, um, I went to a mom, mom meetup and then I realized, hang on, my customer is on maternity leave for three months and she's going to all these mommy meetups. She's going to the hospital. She's learning how to breastfeed. She's, you know, anything that's got to do with a new baby. How can I get in there? How can I get in front of her, you know? Um, and I would go and, and stand in front of a group of five moms. Sometimes there was two moms that would show up, especially Cape Town. It's raining. Everyone's like, oh, I'm not going to take my baby out. And then you go and you're like all nervous because it's like talking in front of people. And then there's two people. And I'm like, oh, my God. But she landed up buying a baby carrier, you know, and she landed up telling a friend. And then that friend found out. And, you, you know, you've got to consider like every customer is so important and if you treat every single customer from day one like they're the most important customer in the world and then as you grow you can roll that out to scale i think that's a great place to start yeah i think that's great perspective if you build it they won't come <laughs> i mean it's it's just about you, you just got to have such a thick skin in the beginning and just every step of the way just keep grinding keep going forward because they all can't right all those different steps you know, they add up over over time, and then obviously you, you start to build up your audience, you know? And Matt, from a technical consideration, I mean, can you share with us at least some of the things that maybe people don't really understand or realize up front? Sure, uh, so this has kind of been noodling on my mind a little bit. Um, when you begin, right, there's so much ambition. You're like, this thing is gonna work, it's amazing, and I'm gonna do the whole funnel, I'm gonna build everything I need, and I'm going to just buy it, and I'm going to hire the team, and we're going to do the whole thing, right? And we're going to build this amazing website because we will be Facebook, right? <laughs> but that's, that's, the, that's the long, distant, distant like future, right? That's not for today, right? So South Africans have this incredible entrepreneurial hustle. And I mean, looking like across the world, I don't think I've seen much that's close to what we have in terms of that ambitious hustle. Right, just to get it done and to really get out there. But it's important to do for today as well. So the technology might be big. You might say, okay, I'm going to spend the next six months, I'm going to hire a dev team and we'll build the whole thing. But what can you do today? Right, you, don't, you don't need to have the whole tech team. You can actually do a heck of a lot just with the tools that are out there. Right, so the tech can come later. You can build on top of, of what you've got. It's such a good point. I think, it w and, and the way I understand that is it's almost like an entrepreneurial c curse in a way, like particularly the design focused of amongst us where we want it to be perfect, you know? And what's that saying? If you're not embarrassed by your launch, you've launched too late or you something like that. Like, yeah. so, so it's like, you know what I mean? Like you, you, want, to, you want to just get it out there. And, and I mean, you will be a little bit embarrassed about it because... You can sit for m months and years even trying to tweak and get it perfect, but then how much time have you wasted? And then when you launch it, people, they don't come, right? So it's, mm. it's rather get it live now, start gleaning the, the data, get the feedback, and start to iter iterate uh, accordingly day by day what you do today. So I think that's, that's great perspective. Um, and I, I think, I mean, um, Shannon, I'm sensing like a little bit of disgruntlement <laughs> around the early days <laughs> of how much of a freaking slog it was and, uh, and how 
you're a little bit angry with Ex Nilo for not launching <laughs> this product <laughs> seven years ago. Um, and, and so, I mean, I, I feel that too. But um, can, can you maybe, in your view, and particularly as a designer, um, share a little bit of perspective of how maybe the world has changed in terms of setting up of e-commerce and things that you see now that, you know, I mean, more examples of stuff that you would have loved to have seen back then, for example. Yeah, I think, um, you know, YouTube is always your friend. There's so much free stuff on there. Um, when I started, I, I, I mean, I'm a self-taught web designer as well. I didn't do a web design course. It kind of just happened by accident. Like the person that I was working for as a graphic designer was like, hey, we should have a website. It's 2004. And I was like, okay, well, <laughs> he's like, can you make one? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> Um, but that's kind of how I got into it. So I was like researching and, and trying to learn how to do it myself. Um, back then it was like lines of code, you know, and um, learning HTML and learning CSS. And it was very complicated. Whereas now I think, you know, with Xnilo and, and with all the other things that's out there, there's often a tutorial. And it's a, the, the, the way they take you through the process of learning is really amazing. Um, there's, so, there's almost like no excuse for me because there's just so many ways to learn for free. You don't have to, if you find something that you have to pay for, there's guaranteed going to be a free version of it, you know, um, which, you know, in the beginning is great. Like, if, I mean, I'm not going to use free stuff now. If, if I can take a shortcut anywhere, I'm going to pay for it. If if it puts me in debt, I don't even care. Like, I want to go through things fast. But in the beginning, that's you can't do that, you know. Um, so, yeah, I think things have got easier, but as well more overwhelming because there's so much choice. So also speaking to other business owners out there that, you know, you can say, okay, well, where are the people who are like the people that I look up to and I want to get there? Let me speak to them. Let me find out um, what are they using? Why are they using that? Why did they make that decision, you know? Um, because obviously you're looking at the company, they're not going to put their, their worst testimonials on their website. They're going to put their best testimonials. So when you're just looking at the company for should I choose you, obviously it's just who's the best salesperson. Um, you need to go a little bit further than that to see um, what's the best decision for you. I, I remember as a, also as a designer um, picking up .NET magazines. Do you remember those? The <laughs> you'd buy the magazine as opposed to now... You go on YouTube and you have all the tutorials that you want. Back then you had to buy the magazine in order to learn how to code and do CSS and all that kind of stuff. And you just hack your way through, right? And there's like, also the other thing is now there's so much drag and drop. You can drag and drop everything. Like, it's, it, and it's, I think it's also why most of the WordPress people when Gutenberg launched, they were like, what? Like, get stuffed. Like, are you joking? I have learned... All of this for so long, I can finally code. <laughs> like, I was like, whatever. <laughs> when I'm just like, chook, chook, chook. <laughs> why, why take the stairs when you can take the elevator, right? And, and I think that's the thing. And just a note to all of those amongst you who potentially are not designers, that's okay. You don't need to be a designer nowadays because, I mean, you know, like the themes that, for example, in the managed WordPress uh, uh, product, and, you know, there, there's stuff that you can just pull off and they, they're they're really baked in beautiful, you know? So um, it's it's a lot easier today to to start and launch. I think it's just about that first step, just to be brave and, and get stuck in. Um, Matt? I think you just touched on something that I, I wanted to just make sure to flag there. Right, so when you're online, it's a living, breathing thing, right? So it's okay to launch and it's not perfect. It will never be perfect, that's totally okay. Even if you completely just take a default theme from anywhere that someone else is using, it's okay. Just get it to market. The thing will be alive on the internet as long as you keep it there, right? And it's changing all the time. So I think that's like the, dy the dynamism of the internet is really powerful, right? So put it out there and just see what, see what works. You'll make small changes as you go, but it's more important to get it into the hands of your customer than to make it pixel perfect and a completely unique design and, and all the things. That will come. And also, great imagery goes a long way. <laughs> yeah, and, and there's now with, with you know, Unsplash and all these yeah. image resources, there's so many places you can go and find imagery and video material and all the stuff that you want is, is basically drag and drop. You can just find it and bring it across, right? 
and then with like stable diffusion and all these AIs and things, you can like make your you can take a photograph of a vase or something in a kitchen, and then it looks like it's in a studio. Or you can do all kinds of things. It's unbelievable. Okay, so we're going to touch upon AI shortly, and we don't want to terrify people just yet, but there is certainly a whole new world coming up, which is ostensibly going to make things even more interesting, you know? So somebody tweeted yesterday something like, we were wrong. AI, uh, uh, Web3 is not crypto, it's AI, right? And I think they're kind of actually right about that. So I, I want to know, just before we get into some of the practical stuff, and we're going to open it up for questions. So... Uh, in a few moments, I'm going to ask whoever wants to ask a question, just put their hand up. Um, but, um, okay, I mean, there's so many businesses that have started in garages. I mean, Yappy Chef is a great one. They're two friends of ours. They've been a part of the heavy chef community for some time. I mean, they started in a garage, literally the garage opposite mine, um, <laughs> which is quite interesting. And, and, and literally in a freaking garage, you know, next to the washing machine and the tumble dryer. And they had a little, you know, lean-to desk, and um, and you know, starting from from scratch. I, I want to know from from you, what businesses do you admire? You know, I hope I mean hopefully South African businesses, but not necessarily confined to to South Africa. Shannon, um, one of my favorites online is Faithful to Nature. I really like Faithful to Nature. Um, I love you know the way they. Um, personalize their emails as well. Uh, I shop there and I've got like my cart and then like they will send me discounts, special discounts just on those items just for one day, you know, things like that. And they time it well. Their messaging is so nice. They, um, they're very focused on education, like educating their customers. So I've learned things from just being a customer that I would never have learned if I didn't shop online with them. And I think that's the thing about e-commerce as well is that it's, the uh, the brands probably that I enjoy the most are the ones that provide high education on you know the the topic that or the industry that they're in. Um, it's it, it, the same for my product as well. It's a very high education product. It's not a um, you know open the box and put your baby in. You've got two bodies going on. You've got a lot of straps. You've got generally a screaming baby when you start. So there's a lot of learning to do. And um, you know you can take a really simple product like you selling, I don't know, diaries or whatever, and you can start teaching people about how to use a diary in a better way. You can give, there's so much that you can add to the product that you're selling. Um, I've forgotten what the question was now. <laughs> question is, who do you admire? Oh, yeah. Don't to ramble, Shannon. Sorry. I was about to interrupt yeah, you. Yeah, okay, thanks. Um, yeah, so I think um, that's a, a nice, one of my favorite faithful to nature. Um, because overall, they do all the things well, you know. So, um, and I don't actually do a lot of online shopping. I've got probably like my five places that I go to, and that's that, you know. Yeah. yeah. Once you find your people, you stick with them. Yeah. yeah. Matt? I was thinking you were going to say Checker 6060, maybe. Like <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think the, the one that really stands out for me is I, I love brands that, that personalize, yeah. so like that there's human connection and that there's a mission behind it, right? So human rights stands out to me. The, the writables, like you get a journal, like a really high-class journal, like better than a moleskin even, and, uh, and then they would send like textbooks and coloring books and activity books to kids, you know, and that, like, that was just a fantastic business. I'm not sure if they're still running. I think there's kind yeah. of winding It's, a, it's down, also a heavy chef community fantastic. members, Rich Mulholland yes, and yeah. Pierre Duplessis. So they started it. If you haven't checked it out, it's a beautiful, beautiful business. And, and again, really uh, socially impactive, right? So giving yeah. school, school kids school books uh, for every, every writable that you bought. Yeah, yeah bang on. Yeah, that's the, that's the one that really stood out for me. Uh, and then just a quick mention of like the reminder of personal connection, right? So Derek Sivers, like we were chatting earlier, absolutely fantastic human being. If you get any chance to listen to a podcast, read a blog, anything like that, amazing person. Uh, he, spoke about, he spoke about one thing that I think really sits with us is just to personalize the interaction. So like he ran CD Baby and the people asked him like, what was your algorithm? How did you, how did you make the recommendations for what else we could listen to? Like back in the day of CDs and things. He said, no, I just I listened to it and I recommended what else was good. You know, there's no algorithm or sales or anything. It was just him listening. 
It, there's such a beautiful lesson in in what both of you were saying. I mean, with Robin and and with Rich and 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 with Derek Sievers. By the way, just to, uh, Derek Sievers is D E R E K and S I V E R S. Check him out. He's just an absolute genius when it comes to super practical, really personal stuff and really worthwhile. Uh, reading his material and, and listening to him on stage and all that sort of stuff that you'll find online. But I think the, the thread through both answers was really about that, that human connection. This is a tech interface, right? So you reaching people and, you know, beyond the confines of Tokai, <laughs> you, have, you have an audience that is global, really, because anyone with an internet connection you, you can access your product. So your audience is massive, right? They don't care. They will care only if you care, right? So I think that's the big lesson here. If you care, if you become obsessive, and all the companies that we've mentioned are really people and, and companies, businesses, brands, whose values are really about the, 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 the people that they serve. And I think that's probably one of the most important lessons that we could glean out of this is that when you do your thing, it's not just about hacking algorithms. It's actually about looking after people, you know, whether it's a mom or whether it's, you know, it's, it's somebody who's an entrepreneur um, and who wants to expand their business. You really do have to care, right? Yeah, and I, I think there's a big misconception about people. It's like, oh, I'm going to start an online store. I want to start an online business. It's just like, I'm going to make a website and put my products on and then I'm going to sell and I'm going to make a lot of money and then I'm going to scale it and then I'm going to sell the business. And it's <laughs> like, okay, nice story, you know, because it doesn't go like that. Like, it's, you need to understand all the facets of what are you selling, what's the problem that you're solving, why should the person buy it over something else? Does, you know, are you entering a new market space? Like, there's so much more that goes with it and mostly, like, I would say the majority of people that launch online shops do the online shop, upload the stuff, and launch the Facebook page and everything first, and then they go, oh, shit, what's our strategy, you know? Instead of the other way around, doing the research, doing the hard work, like, you know, you don't just go and buy a piece of land and just say, okay, let's build a house and start laying bricks. You speak to people, you do your research, you start with the foundation and getting that groundwork in place, otherwise, you know, your house is going to fall down. And it's exactly the same with the, in the online space. Yeah. It's just COVID is like amped it up to like, oh, here, yeah, it's so easy. Make, make money online. Well, go to take a lot, you know. <laughs> and, and generally, I mean, there are obviously exceptions like take a lot. <laughs> I mean, there, there are exceptions where these massive businesses have grown on, on mass, you know, using the hacks and the scaling techniques and, and so on and so forth. But... But the more common story and the ones that we've touched upon are the human stories where it's human to human connection, right? So to really kind of focus in on that, I think is a beautiful lesson to take home tonight. And I, I wanna, um, uh, I, okay, so, so I've got a bunch more questions for you that, that I know you know that I wanna get to, but if there's any questions in the audience, now's your time, uh, just put your hand up. Okay, sir, would you mind standing up? So my name's Anthony, I've got a business called Bizarre Reality virtually tech. Um, my question is that businesses are, um, online businesses are becoming a lot easier to be made, so it's like cl getting clutter. Um, how do you differentiate a business that you want, like an online shop that you want to start um, from everyone that wants to just drop ship or, you know, kind of just throw in the business like you say? How do you create some easy, or maybe the question is differentiate what tips would you guys have from a more practical sense? That's a great question. So yeah, you know, you're in the, you say in the virtual reality space, yeah, uh, which is like a very new space. So um, you know, for you, it's it's obviously not new, and it's um, you know the people in your circle, um, they will know what it's about. But like for me, when I hear virtual reality, all I know is that you put goggles on your face and you can play around in th the 3D world. You know, so I suppose it's who you know, understanding who your customer is and what what are you trying to achieve there. And then, like, education, because like I said, like, so many people just assume and think that they're gonna put the stuff up and people are gonna come and they're like, oh, we'll be purple and because they're orange, we'll look different, you know? But it's, it's like uh, really knowing who your customer is and what you're trying to achieve with your business, um, researching that and then taking that and going, okay, well, how can, we, how can we educate them, like make a free course or something to just get them in, you know, get them in the door for free, provide free value 
Um, you can do that through so many different, there's so many different ways you could do it in real life and online. Um, but I think there's a huge opportunity in new, newer industries like virtual reality because people think, they, do, they, they think they know about what virtual reality is, but you probably have so much more that you could give. And there's so many categories you could break it down into and just do like micro lessons on small things and get consistent about that. And you know, if you plan um, rolling that information out, if you sit down for two weeks and plan a whole year in one go, then it's quick because you know, okay, what am I putting out? What are, how many posts am I gonna do about this? And you just continuously you know, recycling that over the, um, the time frame that you've, you've planned it, um, you'll get questions, you'll get more engagement, and then you can also learn back from your audience what, what are they interested in, and you can play around with that, so yeah. Firstly, amazing business name, love it. Uh, I've got two things. So the first one, to echo exactly what Shannon was saying as well about education, it's also about educating the business, right? So there's what virtual reality is, then there's what everyone else thinks it is, and then there's the, the thing in between. Right, which is what your customers are coming to, how they're experiencing your product. Right, so user testing, customer research, getting it in their hands, and then looking for those micro interactions. So, like, how do they do this one thing? Right. So, in in like my context, it would be something like, where are they looking for the button? Not where is it, but where are they looking? Right. So, like those micro pieces of it, like. You can, you know, you'll see customer researchers taking notes furiously because they're looking at every little tiny thing that the person's doing, and that is so powerful, especially in an unknown or like relatively new industry, right? It's how people are actually interacting with it. Like they think they know what VR is, but then how they interact with it is watch what they do, not what they say, right? That's where the real like education comes in, and you can then just feed it back to them and say, oh, you did this, you don't know that you took this action, but we're gonna feed it back to you because 100 people did the same thing, right? So we can then sort of learn from the customers, and you're learning at scale, right, at what everyone else is doing. Um, and then how to differentiate, so your question was like, how do, you, how do you differentiate between your business and like everyone else that's going online, right? The, the thing that stuck in my mind was just to be unexpected and do the unexpected thing. Right, so in today's world, like, would you expect a response, like a personal response, from the CEO to uh, an email? Probably not. You know, if you get an email from, like you sign up for a service and then you get an email from the CEO, it's just an automated script in the background, right? But you know that it's an automated thing. You know it's not a personal email. But what if it was personal? What if you actually took the time just to send that email and send like 2,000 emails in a day? That would be super unexpected. And you can even say, like, this is not a robot. This is actually me. Please respond. Right? People won't believe you, but those that do, that, that's super unexpected in today's world. And like, like we were saying now about like, the human connection. Right? Everyone else is just trying to drop ship things from Alibaba. But like, be, be unexpected. Right? Uh, I, kinda, I just love what he said, what Matt said about... Uh, educating the business like I think that's like so important like getting feedback from customers and in that 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 thought process of differentiating that's going to give so much like you, you oh you never hear that it's a great tip uh, and I think I mean there's a great book called good to great if anyone hasn't read that check it out and one of the points that really stuck out for me in that book where Jim Collins went through all the research of 100 years of businesses and he was asking, what are the, you know, like the big points of distinction that you know, put your business apart? And all of the CEOs of the successful companies that they interviewed were like, there wasn't one. There was, it was tiny little iterative changes, these micro turns of the dial that made the changes over time. And I think that speaks to your point about educating yourself and just being observant and really obsessing about your customer behavior and being able to learn from that, you know? Um, Okay, so we had another question over here. If we can have the mic, please. Uh, um, my name is Yongi Sipo, Tim Kulu. Um, uh, I don't have a business, but I do come Good. from a theater company based in Strand. Yes. So my question is, um, we come from a different environment, you see. So people, uh, more people are less privileged, you see. So I'd like to ask, what motivation do you have for the, pe for the people who do not have the capital in order to start a business. Because you might have the money, but you lack the motivation in order to, to start the business. So what motivation can you give to those people who lack 
um, um, the capital in order to start those businesses. Thank you. Okay, so it's Thank you. just to make sure I'm understanding, um, do you want to know, um, lack the capital, lack the money, or lack the motivation? Because those are two different... It, yes, it's yeah. motivation and also the, the, okay. the capital. Yes. So, okay, so capital-wise, I would say, um, you know, social media. Like, don't be afraid of social media. Get live. Like, go live on social media. People want to, like, that documentary style. Like, if you don't follow Gary V, I don't know if you've heard of Gary V. Um, she's G A R Y and then V E E. Like, look him up. He's, he teaches so much stuff on on how to just get out there for free. So, lack of money for me, like I said, social media. There's just so many ways, and go and follow the people that are you look up to and see what they're doing and just copy them, literally. Um, lack of mo um, well, not lack of motivation. Like finding motivation, especially like I totally understand what you're saying coming from the backgrounds where it's like, there's not that many people around you that can, you know, that th it's, it's a different vibe. It's like this, like, almost like a bit of hopelessness sometimes, especially living in South Africa where, you know, no one's really got your back. It's, it's a tough one. And, um, you know, I think for me as well, like I've always, as a, as a teenager and that I was very shy, I was like not a motivated person. I would never have thought that I'd be sitting here talking with a microphone, like, um, my hands still shake, I still get nervous, you know, but it really is like you have to just start and you just start before you're ready and you just just have to have your own back, like push, put yourself out there, whether you start with two best friends and you say, hey, be my audience, like I want to try sell you something and tell me what I'm doing wrong, tell me where, if I look stupid, like and just take it, don't take anything personally, like it's, it's actually a personal growth journey to become an entrepreneur and a business owner. It's really all about like how you look after your own mental health. Um, don't drink, don't do drugs, flip and waste of money, a waste of time. Um, and trust me, the people is, that, that look like they've got it all are still drinking and, and doing all that stuff. It's very easy to lean on that as an entrepreneur as well and get you know in the wrong crowds and things. Um, so I think it's just looking after yourself and saying, okay, well, there's my vision. That's where I want to be. I'm going to bring it back to here. And just keeping that big vision in mind. So when you have those tough days and you're just like down in the dumps, you're just like, well, this time is going to pass anyway. You know, I'm going to be there in 10 years' time. What I do with my time now is what, the, what counts. And it's just really having your own back. Um, if you're going to spend money on something to motivate you, like getting a subscription to, to podcasts, like to be able to listen to podcasts, um, find one good podcast and it will the algorithm will recommend like other amazing ones it's an amazing free way to feel like you're in the room with like incredible humans I've learned so much from just listening to like Tim Ferriss or Seth Goad and all the big names online that's you know um, in my like uh, my idols that I follow and like want to learn from and it's, that's kind of for free I, I don't know if all podcasts are for free but there's so much valuable information out there so you can make those people your friends even though they're not really your friends Matt yeah I was just gonna just to tack on it first of all the algorithm right <laughs> love that um, but it's so true use it to your advantage right like these people are your mentors right so you jump into a podcast or into anything it's they're your mentor, right? It's not just, oh, like and subscribe, blah, blah, blah. It's, think of them as your mentor, right? And that, that changes the whole lens through which you, like, well, the lens, the audible lens through which you listen to that podcast, right? Now you, you're really drinking it in. Um, on the topic of motivation as well, so that, that's like the how, that's the, I think the podcast thing is like the one to two degree changes that you make along the way, right? But, but if you, I think motivation doesn't really need to be there without discipline, right? So, like, it's one thing, to, like, if you're going to ride the Cap, the Cape Epic cycle race, like a seven-day, I'm not a cyclist, but like a seven-day, you know, Musa cycle race through Neisner and whatever, like, you, you're going through day, you have to start on day one to get to day seven, right? You're not just going to magically show up at the end. So definitely don't underestimate discipline. Like, that's super important. And, yeah, like, like Shane was saying, to, like, Take it. It's like you're either spending money or time, right? So in the start, you'll spend time, and that's like that's where the growth happens. It's fantastic. I, I want to add one tiny little uh, point, and I, I love both of the answers. And I think with that, the discipline and 
you know, you know, being able to tackle or to take advantage of all the resources like podcasts and, and there's a lot of free stuff online at the moment, um, but also be part of a community. So connect with other entrepreneurs, find other people. We've actually got research in Heavy Chef which shows, and this is fascinating by the way, if anyone's interested in the research we do, we've actually done more research than any other organization in South African history on the learning habits of entrepreneurs. We've got over 9,000 completed surveys from entrepreneurs on, on how they learn and how they uh, upskill themselves as they go. And one of the most astounding findings that we've, we've uncovered is that, the, um, that success is predicated largely on the level of interaction with other entrepreneurs, right? So the ability for you, I mean, you have all these mentors, these famous people providing their knowledge and, you know, all the, their, their, you know, their experience for free, their perspective for free. But there's also in the conversations that you have, even tonight, interacting next to the bar, trying not to drink too much Baxberg, um, take on Shannon's point, <laughs> but... But, um, but, but, you know, I think just be able to have a conversation with other entrepreneurs and be able to interact, engage in that engagement and, and being part of the community, you, you get the feeling of being part of something bigger. And there's a huge mental health component to that in, in that understanding that entrepreneurship is blimmin' hard. It's really, really important, but it is really, really hard too. Okay, so do we have any more questions? Uh, I see quite a few. I don't know who was next, but I'm going to go right there. Man in the red shirt. Um, my name is Biggie, but you can call me Big Papa. So, <laughs> yes, sir. so I am from Strand, and I have a business that is called The Chance Lifestyle, which is um, a business enterprise, actually, that is aiming to venture into more business opportunities that are available in the location. So, I'm from a location, and Today's topic is about e-commerce. So about e-commerce in the location, I have a business in the location, and being frank, we are living in South Africa, and load shedding is our reality. Now my question is, e-commerce, taking our business to the internet, taking it online. Firstly, my target market is the location. I can't be targeting people out there while my people are still here. Right? So my target market is here in the location. And many of them lack internet access. And even for those who still have internet access, when there's load sharing in the location, we lose network. Right? So we lack more internet. Now my question is, if I have my business online, load sharing can take up to four hours a day during the daytime. So now my business is online, right? And now if there's load sharing, how am I going to actually proceed with business during the day? That's, that's my question. Thank you. Yeah. It's a big one. Thanks, Peggy. Okay, so I think that you obviously know your audience really well, and that's a good thing. So if we remove load sharing from the equation, is there a reason for you to be online? Because you say your, um, your people are on the ground, they're in the location, and what, whatever you're selling or providing a service to them for... You say they, they're there. Are, are you looking to get other customers outside of the location? Yes, I am looking to get other customers. And since I'm here, I'm still here, yeah. it's going to be a challenge to me. Because if they order online, I won't be able to, because I'm dealing with food. Okay. I sell food. So if I get orders online and I'm still in the location, how am I going to access those orders and be able to get Okay, so on? you're saying the problem is for you, you accessing online so that you can service the customers outside of the location? That as well, and also not forgetting my yeah. targets, yes. Yeah. My so so the, the customers in the location, they wouldn't really access you online, or do they place their orders online as well? So long since I've, I've actually put my business on hold for, um, it's been a couple of months now, because I was busy with school, school was demanding a lot, so I had to place it on hold. And now this June, um, next month, I'm actually finishing up. So I'll be actually available again. Mm -hmm. But I've actually realized that it's, it's more efficient to work from home than actually going out there 
to place my stamp because I don't know how many orders I'll get. I don't know how many sales I'll get. Mm -hmm. But at least when I'm home, it's less work, less energy, and less money. Mm -hmm. So which means I'm making more profits. Mm -hmm. So now I was actually hoping to get on with working from home, taking in orders. But then my challenge is this, is the load shedding. Load shedding yeah. So how, how, how can I actually tackle it? Yeah. Solve Look. our problems for us, please. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So there's a lot of mom businesses that I know. And, you know, load shedding is, is also a time thing. So, like, for example, I know a mom who she sells herbs and teas and things online. But she doesn't have the capacity to courier every day and service every day and do those things. So she, I don't know what kind of food that you sell or whatever. But just ideas that came to mind is that she has one day that she does her orders. And so that works for her business because it's not fresh food or whatever. So she spoke to her customers and she said, like, would you mind this? Would you mind that? In the interim, while I've still got a baby for the next three years, you know. Um, and, and it works for them, you know. So... You've got a lot of problems to solve there, but, you know, focusing on one and maybe going to, if you talk about the people in the location, you want to work from home, say to them, like, talk to them and say, well, this is my problem. I want to work from home and I want to serve you as, as my customers. How can we make this work and have a conversation about it? The fact for you, like, if you're trying to reach other customers online, so these people are shopping online, but now you can't see your orders because you don't have electricity. That's a problem, obviously. Um, the only thing is like, you know, you're going to have to buy like batteries or inverters, but if there's no signal, then what do you do, you know? So it, it, it's a big tricky, it's a, it's a tricky one. Like you maybe need to find a place close by, like, I don't know, Workshop 17 is obviously not accessible, but maybe it's something to think about. Maybe it's, maybe there's other people there with the problem and you guys can all get together and say, hey, maybe we need a Workshop 17 or whatever it is, you know, maybe someone can set something up for us. But you know, we live in this country and we have to, like, we have to solve our own problems because there's no government that's going to actually fix it for us, you know. And that's the thing why entrepreneurs exist is because we the ones that have to get together, sit together and say, okay, well, now there's 20 of us. It's not just me. We all want this. So how can we get someone to come and be a part of this, you know, and maybe we can give them some free food or this or that in exchange. Mm -hmm. Like, you just got to, you know, you just got to hustle, really. It's, it's hard. Matt? Yeah, just to, to add to that, so, I mean, no option is off the table at this point, right? So really th think creative about, like, what could you do differently? So if your lead time is, like, let's say you get the order in the morning and the expectation is that it's there in the afternoon, right? Maybe increase that. So say, like, I'll, if, you, if you place your order today, you'll get it tomorrow, right? Something like that. So it allows you time. You know, while you're trying to figure out how do I get connection, that can that can be an idea to allow you to have a bit more time to actually place that order without the stress. Right. Yeah, there's there's I think there are some some uh, very unique <laughs> challenges in South Africa that it's very difficult for us to be able to resolve all of them in a discussion like this. But I do know, for example, that I mean uh, one example is that Siobonga and Ayanda. Uh, they're starting a, a workspace, you know, in in uh, in Kailiche, where four rooms used to be, you know, and I mean that's the sort of thing, that's the sort of creative solutions. It's kind of like Workshop 17, but but in Kailiche, you know, and I think those are the sort of things that are going to arise out of these systemic problems, you know. That's the one thing about the entrepreneurial community is where there are challenges, there's also opportunities. And that's how we work. It's, it's kind of like an evolutionary process, you know. Um, so I wanted to, in a sense, um, maybe maybe evolve the question a little bit more into, and staying with the theme, what are some, some hacks or some tips that you could provide in the early days in terms of either setting up the business, uh, you know, more cost effectively or um, scaling the business in a way that doesn't require like huge amounts of capital uh, right from the outset? Um, I think one thing that is a, has wor well worked well for us, um, and it kind of depends on your product, but collaborating with other businesses that are not in competition with you, but maybe are serving the same group of people. Um, so for, for me, like I sell a baby carrier, 
I'm not going to collaborate with another baby carrier company because obviously we're in competition. But like, okay, so I'm serving moms from um, from her pregnant days to when when the baby's two years old. Let's say there's so many different businesses in that category that I can collaborate with for free and and get in contact with them and say, hey, let's do a giveaway uh, or let's run a competition. Let's let's have a market day. Let's let's open our our garage up and um, have a day together where people can come try on the products for free and test out your baby cream and you know try out this baby swing and get together and because especially if they're more established than you they've already got the customers trust you know they can easily get those people there and if you're providing something for free or you can even say well we'll give away five baby carriers you guys just rock up and we'll do a, a demo with your product you know um, and and then they bringing the audience. You you haven't done much, but it's it's going to be a cool event, you know. And you can maybe say free tea, free muffins, or whatever it is, you know, specific to your audience. What is, how, how does your audience want to enjoy their Saturday or whatever day they're going to come and spend with you? So collaborations are, I think, I think a good way to a good tip to start with. Cool. Yeah, and I think I, I would concur in the collaboration thing, just in terms of brand partnerships, or also community partnerships, you know. Getting together in community, I mean, it's one of the things, Biggie, like for you even, in terms of the people within your community, who can you co collaborate with, you know? How can you create little markets and pop-up stores and, you know, things where, I mean, Biggie has, I'm told, the best burger in the world. I don't know if that's true. I still haven't tasted it yet, but I'm certainly going to come out <laughs> and taste it at some point in the near future. Um but yeah, you know, when you have different people providing different products and different skills, then I think those are the sorts of things that you can have conversations, even tonight, you know, to talk to the people in the room. How can we collaborate? How can we partner with each other? How can we support each other in terms of, of business? And by the way, Heavy Chef, I mean, our business is predicated on partnerships. You know, starting small, we bring on board partnerships who are aligned with our vision and purpose. And once you've defined who you targeting and what value you bring, suddenly those partnerships start to, they reveal themselves. They become fairly obvious. You know, if you're in a baby category, all of a sudden, and you're providing a lot of value to the moms, you know, the, the partnerships start to become more apparent once you've identified, you know, those, those benefits that you provide. Um, I saw a couple of other hands pop up. Okay, we've got a, a hand over there. Hi, hi, I'm Eleanor, and I'm a SEO consultant, so search engine optimization. And yes, I'm French. <laughs> Not from Durbanville. <laughs> okay. Um, I have a question regarding anticipation. Uh, if you start a website, indeed, it's quite uh, easy, you know, with like uh, Elementor, Page Builder, blah, 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 to make it happen, to make it look beautiful. But most of the time, when you start to, to make a big website, when you start to scale it, it starts to get slow. It, uh, you get a lot of uh, problems that can happen. And for me, I would like to know what would be your advice? Um, you know, like what you should watch out for before you, you decide for a stack or whatever, like which kind of hosting, which kind of uh, team, like, First of all, like, is it WooCommerce compatible? <laughs> you know, like you have thing you have to be careful before you start a website. And I would like to know what what are your advice on that? I can see all the ex Nilo folks. <laughs> pick me, pick me. <laughs> you need to have a conversation with this crew over here after the afterwards. But Matt, let's yes, hand that to you. Hosting is critical, but it's also really important. Like your your host is always going to be refining the caching that they do, the performance layers in between basically the customer and the code, right? So that's really important to get the right host partner, and XNILO is a fantastic partner to have. On top of that, obviously making sure, like you're saying, you're choosing the right software to run is really important. So I assume you've made the right choice and use WordPress, which because you, you said Elementor and, and you know. Okay, so on top of that. This you guys is, this need is to be like paying Matt scene, for this. <laughs> So really, there's, I'm going to go off record, there's no excuse for bad code, right? And bad code will always slow down your site. It doesn't matter how much caching you've got in front of that. Like, bad code is going to load at some point for some customer. They're going to miss the cache and all of a sudden slow, right? So really important to 
to be considered about the code choice. Obviously, don't push the pixels around you know, at the expense of launching. You know, rather put something out there that's a little bit slow and then optimize it later, that's fine. But everyone, every tool that you're using in that stack is working to optimize their product. Right? And they're hopefully working within all the other products as well to make sure that everything is kind of aware of each other. And you know, WordPress is an interesting space in that all the code kind of sits together. So it all needs to talk well with each other and work really well together. So you know, everyone is doing that. Right? Elementor is doing that, I would hope. Uh, WordPress is definitely doing that. And your hosting provider in the background is doing that as well. So okay, maybe some like quick like quick tips on that stuff as well. Audit the plugins that you have. Right, that's really important. If you're not using it, delete it. Right, even if you, if you've deactivated it, delete it. Like unless it's custom code that you don't have a backup for. Rather make a backup first and then delete it. But that that's part of it, right? The code is sitting there. It's going to load at some point, and it's going to slow things down. Right. Um, I could, I could go on, but yeah. There's a lot to consider there. I think every layer of that is really considered, but don't hold back from launching at the expense of something being slow. You can always optimize it later. Yeah, and again, I mean, okay, this is starting to sound a bit of an advertorial for you, for you guys, but I think having a good support team. I mean, Exnilo obviously built the, their business on support, but, but I think having people that you can talk to about you know, things like image size and, and optimizing your pages and, and ensuring that, you know, the pages aren't too heavy. You know, if you've got a page with big images on them, it's going to slow it down and introduce latency onto it, you know. And so I think, you know, having people that you can you can trust and, and being able to speak to those people and being able to sense test the, the you know, what's going on on your website is really, really important. Um, from your side, Chana, or Matt? One, one quick plug for Jetpack as well for you. Um, it sounds like adding another plugin would slow things down, but in the case of Jetpack, you'll find it actually speeds it up. We've got caching, image caching and optimization, and a boost feature, right? So boost is like another layer of caching for all the assets, like your CSS and JavaScript and things like that. So we definitely recommend the combo of XNILO managed hosting and Jetpack together. And I think you'll it's you'll see it's it's even faster than you think. You guys definitely need to pay this man a commission <laughs> after this, Shannon. So I'm not very techy at all, um, but I had a problem once, and I know what you mean. Like the more stuff you, the longer you're running the website, the more heavier it gets, and then all of a sudden you're like, why are my pages loading so slowly? And I've I had a thing once with um, with a plugin and. I, could, I actually didn't know what plugin it was, but I was just like, why are these pages loading so slowly? And someone told me about this one plugin, and it's been so useful. And I don't know what it's called. It's, I think it's called Health Check, and it's, you put your website in troubleshooting mode. It's called Health Check. It's like such an easy name. Is that right? Yeah, it's built into WordPress now. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, amazing. Okay. So, and it's tr you put your website in troubleshoot mode, and then you can, it's live to everyone, but for you as the logged in user, you can switch off, you can switch themes, which is the first thing. So you see, okay, now let me check my website. Is it loading as slowly or not? Um, generally, it's a plug-in conflict. And then you can switch on and off your plugins one at a time and see which one it is. And it was one that I thought, no way, it can't be that one. And it was because something silly like I didn't have auto updates enabled or something. And then I updated it because I was like, oh, why is it not telling me? Oh, it was like I hadn't actually, they had emailed me a patch version of it or something. I don't know. And as soon as I figured this out, I just downloaded the, that one and put it on and it worked. So it's such a simple thing, but that has really saved my life, not being a techie and, and, and like figuring things out. For those of you who are feeling a little bit intimidated, perhaps, by all the, the jargon and the terms and the technical uh, explanations, I think just a note that it, this stuff, once you're in it, and if you really are serious about e-commerce and getting into this sort of business and getting online, first of all, you learn as you go. You know, So when you start, you just start, and it's fairly simple. And the complexity just comes in organically, and you actually get to learn how to understand it I think as you develop and as you, you gain experience, and it's actually not as complicated as it may sound from these two individuals <laughs> who have been slaving and hacking away for many years, 
you know, it kind of, it, it really is actually, in my view, a whole, a whole lot of fun as well. And so learning that stuff, and, and the first steps are fairly easy. Once you get down, you can choose to make it a little bit more complicated, start adding in other little plugins and fancy bits as you start to gain in confidence. And I think, okay, before we, we um, you know, rename this into a WordPress, uh, <laughs> WordPress fan club, fan conference, um, I want to ask a question around the, I mean, it's not just WordPress, right? There, there's a few options out there. I mean, there's Wix, there's Shopify, there's, you know, there's Squarespace. There's a bunch of newcomers into the market. There's a whole lot of um, software as a service products and offerings. And obviously, I mean, neither of you have a huge amount of, of experience in those. But can we just talk it through? And uh, in terms of maybe for the, you know, for the, the, the newcomers here, you know, some of the pros and cons, like how, how can you think about what platform to choose? Uh, Shannon, I'm going to start with you. Yeah, it's a difficult question <laughs> because I'm such a WordPress fan. Um, well, can you say why you're a WordPress fan as opposed yeah. to, say, for example, choosing something like Shopify or Wix? Yeah. So, I mean, Shopify and Wix wasn't even around. Um I got into WordPress because I had a friend who was doing a talk at a WordPress conference. And I went to the conference and I was like very new to this whole world and it was just such a fun day and the community was there. That was the thing is I just loved the community. I loved the support. I love how no matter what kind of question you ask, it was never a stupid question. People like validated you and it was just great. Like you needed help, someone would help you. And that is, for me, like a huge thing, um, whether you have a paid service or a free, ser a free service. The thing for me about, as an e-commerce um, shop, like I own a shop now in e-commerce, I am trying to get as much profit out of my shop, obviously. That's the point of being an entrepreneur. And no matter how hard you work, you never, <laughs> you never seem to get enough you, you never seem to get ahead, you know. SARS takes this, and this one takes that, and then you need this, and then you need that. So it's a continuous game, you know. But it's like, do you really want your, your, per, you know, if there's stuff out there where you don't have to pay a monthly fee to use it, like, why wouldn't you rather choose that? So that, for me, as an entrepreneur, is like, if I'm reliant on you, and you can just change your price whenever you want to, I'm bound to you. My profit is bound to you. Where If I can get myself to a point where my selling platform, I know it's going to be this much every year just to renew the plugin. Or the plugin's free and I'm going to get support. You know, And I can add on paid value ads if I want to. But I don't want to be limited by, you know, if you're going to do... Uh, 50 sales a month, it's free. But if you're going to do 500, we're going to we're going to take commission. Like, no, that's not what I want. You know, there's enough stuff to pay for. So that's like one of my my decisions. Yeah. Cool. No? Yeah, and just to add to that as well, um, your data is yours, right? So if you go to one of these hosted things, obviously, first of all, go where your customer is, right? So if your customers are all in WhatsApp and they love transacting in WhatsApp, you don't need a website. You just go do it in WhatsApp or Telegram or Signal, wherever it actually is, and you know that might be that might be the end of well, not the end, but like that's the the stopping point technologically, right? That could it could be that simple. But if we're going on the assumption, okay, we're going for an online store, right? If you're running it yourself and you're hosting it with Ex Nilo or whomever else. And it's running on WordPress. You own the data soup to nuts, right? It's your information. You get to take it with you and do whatever you need to do with it. You can pump it into Zapier or any of these other tools and really do what you need to run your business, right? And like Shannon says, no one's going to come in and say, oh, now you're actually doing well. We're going to take some more of your profit. You know, it's yours, right? And this is the thing with WordPress, in my totally unbiased opinion, working on WordPress and WooCommerce and all these things. But this is the thing with WordPress is everything built on that is about community and it's about actually the freedoms of the license that it's built under, right? So things like code licenses are very technical and you know it's real bedtime reading kind of stuff, right? If you especially if you have insomnia, just go read the <laughs> any code license, you'll be great. But ultimately it's about the four freedoms of it, right? So you, you should be able to see that code, you should be able to modify that code, understand it, and repurpose it for your own needs. 
right? So if you now say, oh, I'm going to go, let's say WooCommerce, right? So I need a payment gateway, and maybe one doesn't exist for this payment provider, but I'm, I love what they do, and I really want to use them. You go build one. If you don't have what you need to build one, there's YouTube. You can go on Codable or tools like that and get a freelancer to build it for you. <laughs> or ask ChatGPT, yeah. <laughs> Beware of that, though. It does hallucinate from time to time and think of things that aren't there. Um, but you have so much freedom and portability in what you're doing. Right? So you can make it f work exactly as you want, no constraints. So in, in our case in South Africa, as an example, you might go to a Wix or a Shopify or a big commerce and you say, look, I really love PayFast. I'm running my business with PayFast already. I'm transacting through it. The account is there. I want to use PayFast on my store. And they just go, sorry, we don't care about you. You're at the bottom of the world, whatever. You know, go do your thing somewhere else. Whereas with, with a platform like WordPress and WooCommerce, you can either make it yourself or because we're South African, I think PayFast was actually the first payment gateway we built for WooCommerce. Yeah, it was actually the yeah. yeah. So yeah. you know you can you can really take control and you can say I want to do this, and I'm gonna make I'm gonna make this thing work with the tools that I need, whatever they might be, and that's super powerful, especially at scale when you can take your data and actually do so much more with it. You have access to every piece of your online business. Yeah, I mean, just an example. I mean, Squarespace is an amazing platform, but it doesn't accept PayFast. It only accepts Stripe. So you have to jump through the most extraordinary hoops to be able to transact. You have to set up a Stripe Atlas account, set up a company in Delaware in the United States, get all the tax implications of that, get your bank account and whatnot, just to trade. Whereas with PayFast, you literally go onto PayFast website and you sign up and you you get a managed WordPress product and you can go through WooCommerce and you can you can start trading. I mean, all within a day, right? As opposed to like a few months when when you would want to trade on Squarespace. So, I think those are the sorts of of considerations certainly that would come into mind. Um, is the ease of use and the and I, I love the point about community. I th was it WordCamp? The yeah. 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 <laughs> Cheapest. So WordCamp is an old, uh, like in the in the 2000s, I think they used to host these. They were, they were basically nerd camps, and so they were just the most accommodating, most beautiful communities that you could possibly imagine. And everybody made you feel it's kind of like Africa Burn for techies, yeah. you know. Um, so, so um, we've got a few more questions, one or two more questions in the crowd in the back there. I do see you, so you're you're next. Andy. Hi, my name's Deandra. Um, I just wanted to know if you have any advice for, obviously you've said, sorry, obviously you've said like get your website out as quick as possible, don't worry over pixels. But then once it's out, what do you advise for like improving thereafter? Obviously you get like Hotjar and um, plugins that kind of like record people's user experience and stuff. Do you have any other advice, better plugins than, I mean, uh, um, applications other than Hotjar or maybe like in-person kind of options? I think it depends what scale you're, you're talking about, right? Mine so would be more yeah. uh, small to medium-sized businesses, not... Oh, sorry, I meant traffic scale. Oh. Yeah, so like how much traffic's coming to the website. So if you're getting hundreds of thousands of views a day, Hotjar is amazing, Yes. right? It's fantastic. But really, I think the granny test is amazing as well, okay. right? Just put it in front of your granny, right? And say like, find, like tell me to find like, how do I buy, let's say the product, you're selling socks online, right? Let's say, uh, go find me a pair of rainbow socks and go buy it, right? And give her a coupon that she can, so you don't have to actually, like, transact money. But if, you know, the, I'm, I'm kind of saying it a little bit in jest, but the, the idea of, like, getting in front of a real person and just watching them yeah. is just fantastic. And you can use, like, usertesting.com and things like that to do that as well. If you, if you want to get more reach or a particular type of audience or or something like that, That okay. that's fantastic. Cool, thank you. Yeah, and also split testing. I don't actually know a lot of split testing plugins offhand, but you can like um, split test your sales page, like your single product page. You can let it show, you know, two images and just, uh, you know, as the main image. And then after a week, you can see which one is converting better. 
Um, and then you can, or you can, you can change like a headline. I mean, like even on a landing page, you can just change the headline or, or change simple things. Like I used to do this um, for, I used to work in, an, in a, a startup tech company for a, a short spurt. And I remember that was just my job to do all the split testing on the web pages. And there was one thing, it was absolutely ridiculous. We changed the, the button that said play video. Instead of a see-through outline, it was a solid button and it killed the other one. I can't remember which one won, but it was like 60% conversion compared to 7%. I was like, what? Like I, in my brain, thought, no, this looks better as a designer. I was like, that one's going to win. Completely failed the test. Like, so you just don't know. Like, so split testing can be very helpful. Yeah, and for tools for split testing, you can use Google Optimize. Yeah. It's really, really helpful for that. And just test one thing at a time yeah. and make them really, really small. A, B test, not A, B, C, D, E. Yes. That's a waste of time. Yes, yes. 100%. Cool. We have a question over there, sir. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is um, Zukisi. I'm from Strand. Um, I'm an artist and a graphic designer. So um, I've started a website um, by the end of last year, but now it's just there. And, and the purpose of doing it, I was trying to use it as and gallery where I'll be able to display my artworks and all that. So what I'm struggling to do is to drive traffic to the website. So in the marketing world, according to what I know, we have like digital marketing and traditional marketing. So how can I combine the two in order to drive traffic to the website? Yeah, uh, two quick ones. So. I'd say just get really clear on what you want people to do on the website, right? So are they buying, are they contacting you? Whatever that, that thing is, that's the end of that funnel, right? So when you get the people to come in, if they're just looking, then they just fall off, the funnel's done. But if you need them to contact you or to buy something from you or to sign up to your newsletter, you know, that's a really good one if you don't have another call to action sign up to your newsletter or you know, WhatsApp group or something like that, and then you can drive traffic to that and you can see how much, how much you're actually getting out of that traffic. Right? But if you're just driving traffic, then you're not gonna be able to measure the effectiveness of, of that traffic that you're getting in. Um, but and to drive traffic, uh, a tool called AdBot <coughs> is amazing for this. So it basically automates Google and Facebook ads. But the, that's just the, the front end of the funnel. You'll optimize that as you go. But if you're not driving them to something specific, some action, like signing up, buying, contact you, whatever it might be, then th there's no point driving the traffic. So, um, question. So does that include like call to action, whether I want them to order or I want them to, you know, to view or those type of things? Yeah, something like an order. It can even be an email me, you know, email me to order a print for example. And then the number of emails you get, maybe they each have like a subject line that says like order, number, whatever. Um, that's the simplest thing. Is then you can see how many emails do I have in my inbox that came from there, right? And then the more traffic you drive, it's like a slot machine, right? You put five rand in, you get 50 rand out. Because now you can measure the effectiveness of you paying for that traffic. Can I ask, are you getting traffic at the moment? How big an audience do you have coming to the website at the moment? Do you know? Um, I'm not really notified, but um, um, so the people that I get that go through my website, I'm getting them through my social media pages. So what I'm trying to do is to get people from the website to the social media pages instead of social media to website. Okay, because I think what's important, and you can, in, uh, is, it a, is it a WordPress website? Or what is it? I'm not really sure what it is because someone helped me to develop it. Okay. But yeah. Yeah. So you see, there's a, there's a few problems here because you can't actually measure what's happening on your website. So what's important is if you're going to have a website, you need to be able to measure how many people are coming already. Because if you don't know that, then, then you don't have any, any data to work with. So like someone made that website for you, that's great. But you need to have control of your website for in order to understand what you're working with in order to grow. So if you can get to a point of having a simple, like, I don't know if you're paying hosting fees for that website now or what, but I would assume that you are. So 
you could make a change. You could uh, not to just punch the people that's here, but you could get a WordPress website. You could get simple plug-in solution, new website that you know how to do on your own, and then plug in a plug-in like for free, like Jetpack, and measure how much traffic's coming here. Because with that, then you can understand, right, only 10 people are visiting my website every day. I need more than that. And then you can start doing things to see, okay, now I've got 100 people, but there's, there's still no inquiries coming. So are they the right people or are they the wrong people? Or is it that they're the right people, but they just don't understand how to contact me or how to place an order? So there's quite a lot going on there, but I think the most important thing, if you're gonna not have control of your website and not be able to measure the people coming and the traffic and then have testing on your marketing efforts, then your marketing efforts are going to waste because you can't even see any results. So that would be for me number one, is I like get full control of your website. If you're already paying hosting, you might as well take control and host somewhere else where you know what's going on. Okay. Uh, yes, sir, introduce yourself and uh, question, please. Uh, my name is Yandisa Makakana. You can call me Gax from Strength. I have a clothing line called um, Look at God, one of the t-shirts I'm wearing. Um, my question is more on the safety and security part of e-commerce or online, right? Um, there's a group of people who don't like to use online space or e-commerce because of they don't want to be hacked or be scammed. Such people, they don't even want to tap their cards. Right, and it's our customers. How can we how can we deal or we address or help them to come on board to the online space? Thank you. Yeah, trust. That's the yo, we are so behind in that space here in this in South Africa. Trust in e-commerce is just I mean, you know, even like Take a Lot has spent probably more money trying to build trust in e-commerce than anything else they've spent on their business. So I hundred percent agree with you on that. That's super important. How do you get them there? Um, for you, though, so with the security side of things, this is a bit of a skeptical view, but it works. Okay? It's not a matter of if you get hacked, it's a matter of when. Right? If you assume it's going to happen at some point, then you, you stop worrying about when is it going to happen, and oh, what if I get hacked, and all this. And you start with your incident response plan. How are you going to figure out what do you do Right, if you've spent all this time worrying about getting hacked and zero time planning on what you're going to do if you get hacked, then you know what happens when you do. Right, so good backups, very important. Right, so that means investing in good hosting. I think by now, I think everyone in the room knows who to go to for really good, reliable hosting. Yeah, but that's essential. Right, so when you get hacked, it should be a matter of I just flick a switch and I roll back and I'm done. Worst case scenario, if you've got like thousands of orders coming in per hour. Worst case scenario, you lose a few orders and you have to go and contact some customers directly. Well, they will contact you when the shipment doesn't arrive, right? But that is an absolute worst case scenario. So on, that's on the website side of things. So a good backup that you can roll back. Simple things like an SSL certificate. If your SSL certificate's not included in your hosting, then talk to your host, right? The things are free now. Right, it's 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 a little thing that's you know, the little lock when you browse a website, that little green lock. That's how you know, right? That's a trusted website, right? So that's the one side. And on the credit card side of things, actually, don't worry about it, right? Because you're working with a payment provider, so your PayFast, your SnapScans, your Yokos, they they're storing that information, right? So when someone says, actually, my credit card was compromised and it came from whatever then you turn around to them and say, hey guys, like, you guys are supposed to be keeping these credit cards safe and secure, right? So that, the, the best thing you can do is to, at, this, at the early stage, is offload that responsibility to your payment provider, right? Don't take that risk. You don't need to be holding credit card information. That's really high risk stuff. Um, are you, but are you, were you asking also from your customer's perspective Yes, especially the old generation. You yes, know, yeah, okay. To, they don't want to give up their cards, yeah. right? Because after you use your card, and then like one rent deduction yeah. from your account and all that. So I think um, the SSL certificate is important with that lock. So there's an element of education that you have to give to your customers. So you can put a notice like, you know, um, 
you can put at the bottom of your website maybe showing secure transactions powered by PayFast or whatever. Yes. And, and they, they, that person can click and go and see that, okay, PayFast is legit, you know. But the other thing which a lot of people forget about, and, and this was something that happened to me when I started my business, is I never had my cell phone number on my website to start because I was like, I'm just going to be online, take orders, buy email, my life will be simple, whatever. And then eventually I was like, actually, uh, people are emailing and saying, hey, what's your number? So then I was like, let me just add it. And then I started getting so much intel from that because we have a lot of grannies and grandpas that buy gifts for their daughters or kids that's having babies. And they would phone for the reason to make sure we existed. They were like, hey, I just wanted to find out. So you guys are based in retreat. We were like, yeah. You know, so the conversation, and it was just so unexpected. Even now, I'm answering calls sometimes where there's a granny. And she's like, okay, I've got the stage one gray up. What do I do now? <laughs> like, how do I get it to my door? You know, so the phone number is actually something that's very overlooked. Put your phone number and right there, call us. If you need in, in, any information, we're available from this time to this time, Monday to Friday, so they're clear. Okay, if I'm phoning on a Saturday, no one's going to answer. But then have a voicemail, have a WhatsApp business account, put your catalog there, like make it look trustworthy so you're building trust for the person on the other side. Um, and t talk in their language the way they would speak. Like ask them, what are your, um, what are your hesitations? And, and then make an FAQs page maybe and say, how do I know that making a purchase on your website is safe? And answer that question for them. It's that human connection again, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> righty, righty. Um, hi, um, I'm Raymond. I'm actually a, a new member. I want to join this industry. It's quite interesting. So as a new member who's trying to be into this industry, I've got this interesting question that I've been having in my mind ever since I've been here. So as I want to try a new business and be in the website, because normally when you go online and try to buy something, there's always these big, <coughs> excuse me, these big shocks where they advertise, they think you take a lot, you Amazon. So as me, as a new member, I'm so small and then I want to be different and then I want to advertise, and then I need to get my people to trust me in worthy in terms of my theme, in terms of my product, and then as well in terms of I'm not a scam on itself. How about do I overcome that? Because at the end of the day, I also want to be someone who's different from others. You know what I'm saying? Yes. It's about trust, and against when you've got the big guys like Take A Lot and Superbalist and so on, and you're competing out the gates. So how do you um, I would ignore Take A Lot and all the big guys. Like, don't even look at them because <laughs> they, they seem so intimidating and like they own the marketplace and everything. But it's not, it's not really relevant. Like, what's relevant is what, are, what is your product? What are you selling? Who are you selling it to? How are you solving that problem for them? Speak in their words. They need to resonate with you. So when they land on your website... How do they know, like, in the first 10 sec, five seconds, who, like, who you are, what you're selling, or why they should choose you? Like, make that count, you know? And take them on a journey because... And, and then, obviously, you need to find them. So it's, it's all good having this beautiful website that speaks their language and resonates with them. But where are they online? And you need to get there, you know? Like, ignore the giants. It's, it's not really relevant. That, that would be my advice. Like, people are very intimidated by... I take a lot being competition, but are there competition if you know your customer doesn't know you exist yet? The, mo the most important thing is to make sure your customer, whoever that is, knows you are alive and that you can serve them and solve their problem. Cool, we have one last question. <laughs> Sorry, bonus question, guys, and then we're going to call it. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Bennett, and I'm also interested in e-commerce. So the question that I have for today, for tonight actually, is that um, let's say I'm running an e-commerce business and I'm also working a nine to five or I'm a student. And therefore it's hard for me to like keep track with everything. It's hard for me to focus on both things. So let's say there are customers that have been placing orders 
And while they were placing orders, I'll be at work at that time. And as soon as they realize that there is no one who is responding to me, they will obviously look for another, um, another e-commerce business, which is my competitor, and to get the, the service that they were looking for. So how do I balance between the two, between my e-commerce and my nine to five or my education? in general? Um, I would say it's about setting expectations. So don't say, um, you know, put a website up and say, I'm selling this and I'm going to deliver it in one day and then it gets delivered in seven days. Um, you can put autoresponders on your email. So if someone's emailing you or sending you an instant message on Instagram, make sure there's an instant response coming back or an autoresponder on all your emails that say, hey, and just be... Like, I, I'm not for this fake it till you make it stuff. Like, be who you are. Like, put an autoresponder that says, hey, thank you so much for your interest in my business and for your support. I really appreciate it. I'm a student. I'm doing this at this time, and I will only get back to these emails after 5 p.m. Thank you so much for your patience. Here's the most top 10 questions, and here's the answers in the meantime. You know, give them something in the meantime. Um, but just, it is hard. Um, the other thing as well is to, uh, it's very hard to balance those two things, but do things for yourself as well in between to just h help your brain a little bit, like three minute meditation that you find online or something like that, just to support yourself personally as well, because it is hard. At some point, uh, there will come a point at which the work needs to get done, right? So it's about choosing, I think it's about choosing to step out of that like comfortable space, right? So the couch is really comfortable. Flicking around YouTube is really comfortable but could you sacrifice one hour of that comfort for doing the thing that might feel uncomfortable, but that's gonna get that e-commerce business to the next stage, right? So fulfilling orders, you know, putting, putting product into envelopes and making labels and sticking them on, you know, put a podcast on, listen in the background, get some education, and then do the, the like hand, just the mindless hand stuff of putting the orders together, do the work. Right. The e-commerce business, everyone thinks e-commerce is just point and click and go. But it, there's a lot of work behind the scenes. I'm getting a flurry of messages from my team. And, uh, and also, apparently, there's a stray hair that, is, <laughs> that keeps uh, popping out. So apologies <laughs> to everybody for that. We'll review in the video in post and hopefully uh, sort it out. But there's been a lot of debate amongst the team about the best questions. So... Um, let's get to the prize quickly, and courtesy of uh, Celia and Creed, and uh, Baxberg, and Xnilo, and uh, Payfast, and Zero, um, and and a whole, I mean, all the little goodies and whatnot. We have a prize with over two thousand rand. The uh, the best question of the night is Mzukizi Butuma. Um, well played, sir. <laughs> There you go. Woo, woo, woo. There you go, man. Um, and thank you, everybody, for such an engaging conversation and um, and all the enlightening uh, insights and perspectives from our two speakers. Can we please give it up for Shannon and Matt? Well, what a great session tonight. That was really cool. And you know, they were saying they were nervous beforehand, but I think they were lying. And uh, yeah, you guys did so well. That was really, really cool. And thank you for your time and your energy and your effort and your passion for this community and, uh, and just for all you've done in terms of all the hard slog from the early days uh, to be able to, to be sitting here today and sharing all that experience. It really is an honor and a privilege. And one last Round of applause for our two speakers. And um, thank you to all of you. Thank you to everybody here tonight. Thank you for giving up of your time. It's really great to see an audience so engaged and so involved and, uh, and interactive. Please stick around. Uh, have a chat with your neighbors. Say hello to people. Introduce yourselves. Get to know people from different parts of the world. Have a glass of wine, but not too much. <laughs> <laughs> have some CBD, uh, good, good leaf CBD water. It's not going to get you high, but it might just mellow you out, take the edge off. And, uh, and yeah, have fun tonight. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you.